So for this video, I thought I would dress the part, sample some of my old wares. If you saw my last post, I mentioned that I just recently got home from New Orleans. I was there with my significant other and our two friends. It was a great time, but for me, New Orleans is just a lot of energy. So it takes me days to decompress and get back to normal. But while I was there, I had a few experiences that brought up old memories and I thought, why not come home and talk about my time in New Orleans as a vampire with my group of vampire friends. It's something that I haven't talked much about in a few years. It is something that I didn't expect to talk about on camera, but again, coming back from New Orleans and feeling the same energy that was so prominent to me and for me during that time. I just thought, why not make a video out of it? I'm actually filming in a different part of the house. Behind me is my beloved coffin case that holds a lot of treasures that I've acquired over numerous years. Um, so my lovely skull heads and my dark doll sign. So Dark Doll Paranormal was my brand or company. Also, I've got red lights going um, just to set the mood. It's making my nose look sunburned, so I don't know. So yeah, there's not really much I can do to fix that. I thought it would be fitting. So it mainly involved any and all aspects of the paranormal. So ghosts, spirits, hauntings, all the, all the stuff. During the time I had Dart Doll, it was something that I was pursuing professionally. So I filmed a few documentaries. I did some TV show appearances, radio interviews. I just really wanted to put my experiences out there in any way that I could. My experiences go back to being a kid. I grew up seeing, hearing, feeling things that couldn't be explained. It was kind of the norm, but the older that I got, I realized not everybody had the connection or connections that I did. So that's for a whole other video, I feel. <laughs> if it goes down that path, I will absolutely gladly talk about it. I don't dabble so much anymore. I had some things happen that pulled me away from the industry, if you will. It just started to get really hokey and saturated and I was being led down a path that I did not want to go down. I did not want to make a mockery of things that I believed in and still believe in. So yeah, it's for a whole other video, but the main reason for this video is to touch on vampires and vampirism. So Hollywood has really blown it out of the water as far as what people think a vampire is or what vampirism is. So I am picking up where I left off last night. My previous post mentioned vampires. So as far as the typical things that people know about vampires, you know, Hollywood has really put that out there. Um, Anne Rice and her phenomenal work, TV shows, True Blood, Interview with the Vampire, movie. Um, it's painted a very cool picture, you know. People are intrigued by vampires and especially when Halloween comes around, the interest is just ignited. But with that said, when it comes to real vampires, immortality, inhuman strength, drinking blood from strangers, you know, biting the neck and drinking the blood, those are all fictitious. Those are to add to the glam and gore or glory of the vampire. So take it for what it is. 
this is my own personal story and my own account. But as far as feeding, you will hear vampires associate um, feeding with obtaining a source of life, a source of energy. You have blood feeding, you have feeding on ambient energy, so a crowd, a concert, and then um, intimate sexual feeding. So for me personally, yes, I have dabbled in all three and that might be for a part two or another video because like I said, there's a lot of information that goes into it. Yeah, the one thing I've had the most experience with is feeding off of ambient energy, um, not taking energy from one specific individual. It's similar to what you would feel as a public speaker or a stage performer. It's like a rush, it's like a high. Now, some people don't do well with that. And I will say, now that I'm older and now that I'm not really associated with the vampire community anymore, I'm finding that I no longer get what I need from crowds and, you know, ambient energy isn't really a thing for me anymore. I start to feel depleted. I start to feel overwhelmed. I do have anxiety, so I have to keep that in mind. What I once felt in and around crowds, I don't really get that anymore. And it's funny, prior to being in the vampire community, I was like that. I, I couldn't be around crowds. It was very difficult for me. I would feel overwhelmed. But when I was involved, in the vampire community, I got what I needed from that. And like I said, different people and situations, you know, all, all three ways to feed would play a part. I thought I'd move a little bit closer um, since we're getting into really intimate talk. I probably should have started with my awakening. Basically an awakening is coming into existence or awareness of something. And anyone that considers themselves a vampire knows when their awakening happened. I would say a majority of those that I know and have known, it happened during the teenage years. For me, it was December of 2008. I was 20 and by chance I happened to meet a very well-known ghost hunter. So as far as sharing certain details and information, I'm not going to, um, especially with this individual's name and what he is associated with as far as television. And that's just personal. Um, those that know me know who and what I'm talking about, but I haven't been in touch with this person in years. Um, this is actually the longest we've gone without talking and you know you just move on to different things i fully believe that this person came into my life at that particular time for my awakening we had been talking for a few months before we actually met and it wasn't until we actually met face to face that i felt something it's hard to explain, but for me, it was like a fire was lit within me and the lights came on in the house, mentally, internally. Um, everything made sense. I knew exactly who, what, and where I was. It was like everything I knew before that particular moment existed, but had no relevance and I was introduced to so many things. I remember walking into his home and every single thing that I could see was not only intriguing, but it's like it made sense. Like I felt home, I felt Everything just made sense. Everything that I saw connected to me and with me. 
this person had, if not the original copy, one of the original copies of Bram Stoker's Dracula. And he had it in a case on, I don't remember exactly what it was on. I don't know if it was on a shelf or on the wall, but he took it out of the case and I was able to touch it. I could smell it. Everything just connected. I connected to everything. Everything made sense. That was the first night that I had absinthe, real absinthe. If you don't know what absinthe is, look it up. I can go on forever about it. What you hear about absinthe is very true. If you have the right kind, and this was from Europe, this particular absinthe. I remember we were watching Bram Stoker's Dracula and I was surrounded by all these books and all of these things and the smells and just the energy, the vibe, everything was just so in sync. And the absinthe, I remember when it hit, I was fully conscious, but it was like being in a dream, but everything was so real. I was introduced to vampires, vampirism, and for me, that was my awakening. It was just such a significant moment in my life to where once I got home, everything changed. I mean, I remember those in my circle at the time that knew where I was and who I was with, they commented on how I looked different. My skin had a different look to it. My eyes, um, and from then on, I just, this transformation happened and it was very quick from where I was and what happened from then on. So yeah, that was my awakening. I'm not sure how I feel about who or what I was in a past life. Um, I know my roots, I know my bloodline, I know where I come from, but I do feel like I am the type of person that has had and will have many awakenings, like a few prominent awakenings. So December of 2008 was my vampiric awakening. So yeah, I met the Austin vampires or the vampire court of Austin in 2013. And that was another, not an awakening, but that was a very significant time. I moved to Austin from Los Angeles under crazy circumstances and um, transferring jobs. I was working for MAC Cosmetics, trying to get adjusted to that, coming off of a lot of trauma and bullshit. I wasn't in a good place. Yeah, I just remember when I first met the Austin Vampires, another light went off and it was very intense. It was like, once again, I knew who and what I was, where I was. I knew exactly what was going on. And these two individuals, they were very drawn to me and just asked the right questions. Like they knew that I was one of them. They knew they, they could just feel it. I didn't have to say anything. I didn't have to do anything. They just already knew. And I remember we had an amazing dinner and an amazing night together and talked about so much. I talked to them about my awakening and how it happened. That was the first time I was introduced to the term awakening. Like, oh, there is a word for it. Okay. And they loved my story, my situation, and kind of took me under their wing and introduced me to more of the court of Austin. It's hard to put it into words, but it was one of the best moments of my life, being around these people. It's a connection that you can't explain when you're drawn to someone or you know, many people. We did everything together. We went on amazing trips 
to New Orleans and a bunch of different places. It was just pure magic when we were together. Um, and just feeding off of that alone, no pun intended, you know, it, it was just, it was very intense. These were a group of very intense people, but the best kind of intense, like you were intrigued and you felt drawn to them. So, you know, in terms of, you know, vampires being alluring and beautiful and intriguing, you know, that is in part true because that is how I felt and that is how others described me and how they felt meeting me or being around me. It just, there was, there was a chunk of time that was just so special and being back in New Orleans this last week and, you know, seeing places I have spent a lot of time in. And again, I've been going to New Orleans since I was little. So I've been able to experience it in so many different ways. But going with the vampires and being with this group of people, you know, I felt safe. I felt comfortable. I felt alive. I felt just intense energy. Um, you know, any time I would, you know, see these individuals, it was like we picked up where we left off. You know, the two particular individuals that took me under their wing and everything that followed, I, I appreciate them so much. I just, there were quite a few that I've lost contact with, I haven't been in touch with, and you know, if they only knew how important they were to me at that time and how I look at it now as those were important moments in my life and they were a part of it. Um, truly, I truly cherish those people. I mean, it was like me, it was a family. It really, it was a family and we traveled together, we laughed, we lived, we loved, we played. I mean, it was just, it, it's, it's undescribable. It's undescribable, the, the, the magic that happened. I have treasures from those times and those are times I will never forget because again, they were very prominent moments in my life. Unfortunately, the wrong people came along and you know, I don't look back at anyone or anything with um, distaste or negativity. I used to, but I had a lot of mental shit to get back on track. If you knew me during that time in my life, you, I was a very genuine person. And I am, I am a very genuine person, but there were a lot of relationships and friendships that seemed forced and... I am, it goes back to my vampire ways, my paranormal, supernatural intuitions. I pick up heavily on energies. Going back to the feeding, you know, that was a prominent way of me to feed. There are negative instances. Um, certain people in situations just did not gel with me. And I was vocal about it. I would try to fight it if I got bad vibes from somebody, you know, I just tried to stay away. And unfortunately it just kind of, it, it pushed us all away, but then we would come back. We always would come back. So in June of 2019, I had another awakening I felt like I was shedding that skin and moving past everything and moving on to something else. And at the end of June, my life changed. Right before that happened, there was a very special moment with the same individuals I mentioned that 
took me under their wings after my awakening and when I first got to Austin. Once again, they were there to help kind of put me back together in the best of ways. And although those memories are fuzzy because I was not in a good place, I know now that everything was preparing me for the next awakening and the next chapter. But at that time, everything was just so dark and, uh, and these individuals, you know, that it's just, it was a very special time, very special time, beautiful people, beautiful memories. I just want those individuals to know, and they do know who they are. Um, I just hope they know how special they were to me and still are. And I think of them fondly. I have met different kinds of vampires and as far as working and playing and traveling, you know, these people were, they were my family. They were absolutely my family and us as a group, just powerful, powerful in the best of ways. Sexy vampires are a thing. And, you know, as far as that goes and um, sex appeal and sexual energy and yeah, that's a thing. It's very much a thing. And I will say, I know I said that neck biting and, and all that was fictitious, but amongst each other, you know, certain things do happen and it's unexplainable. And it's a very in the moment, just the passion and the excitement. Um, like I said, it was a time in my life I felt the most alive, which sounds weird. Yeah, it's intense.